All right. Hello, students. Welcome to another video lecture for ComSci 125 Operating Systems. In this video, we're, talking to, uh, we're going to talk about the Thread API. As with the previous topics like processes and memory, we talked about uh, the process API in, in Linux or in Unix systems. We also talked about the memory API in terms of using uh, malloc for allocating memory on the heap. So in this in this chapter, we're going to talk about the Thread API. In the previous chapter, we have an introduction on what threads are and uh, their, their, their basic characteristics. So in this lecture, in this video, we're going to talk about the functions that you can use to create threads in your program. So uh, as mentioned before, a thread is basically a, a unit or a flow of an execution path, okay? So you have uh, certain instructions that will be executed by the CPU. So the first thing is uh, to remember is that uh, each process has a dedicated or has a, a default, by default, a main thread. So this main thread, if you don't have a multi-thread program, this main thread will be just the, the main function. And the, whatever is in the main function will be executed by will serve as the as the main thread. Now, how do you create other execution paths or threads within the, uh, within your program okay, in addition to the main main thread? Right? So the first one is the the first function is uh, so the name of the library is called pthread. Post, post six uh, p threads. So the first function that uh, you're going to learn is the p thread create. So this is basically what uh, controls the thread creation. And this is uh, you have to include the p thread header file. And this is the interface or the function definition of p thread create. So p thread underscore create with the four parameters. The first parameter in a parameter is the uh, thread. Uh, thread, the name of the thread, or a thread identifier, which is a pointer to a pthread underscore t. And then we have the attribute of the thread and uh, the function that will be executed by the thread, okay, and the argument to, the, uh, to be passed to the function of the thread. So the thread is the used to interact with this thread. So it's a form of a reference to the thread. So you can manipulate uh, this thread using this handle. The attribute is to specify in attributes this thread might have, like the stack size, scheduling priority, and many others. And the starter team is a function pointer. So this, this just a function pointer would mean that you can pass any valid C function to it, like the name, basically the name of the, the function. And that is the code that will be executed uh, in the thread or another execution path. So that's the idea. And the arg is the argument to be passed to the function, the start routine here, which will be used inside the thread in case you want to pass information inside the thread, okay? But remember that global variables and data on the heap are actually uh, accessible inside the, the thread if you pass a, uh, a reference to it uh, in the case of uh, memory allocated on the heap. So let's talk about uh, more about the start routine. So if start routine uh, uh, instead record another type argument, the declaration, the declaration would uh, look like this. So in the previous uh, definition, you see here that uh, the start routine is void star. Uh, this is the name of the routine. And then uh, the argument, right? the function parameter on the start routine. So if you are specific, if you have a specific uh, argument, so you can say an integer, you can have it something like this. So void star, and then the name of the start routine, and then the uh, int, or which is the type or the argument. This is an integer, a single integer parameter for the start routine, and then you have int arg, right? So this time we are more specific with the type. And then we can return an integer uh, also in this manner. So. Uh, you can take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the man page of uh, pthread create. So everything is actually available in the, uh, man page so you can see it. 
you read the documentation. And so this is the I don't think so. This is the the definition as shown in the manual. So you have to compile all programs that use threads using uh, uh, by supplying the minus p thread parameters. So we can read all of the information about p thread create here. Okay, so you also have some uh, exam an example code here, right? So there. That's for the pthread create. So what happens when a thread, uh, when you call pthread create? So in the previous video, uh, I demonstrated the different execution paths that can happen. But this is uh, what what was discussed earlier is basically the what happens right, when after calling pthread create. So here's an example uh, creating a thread example. Right? Uh, let's let's go over this uh, quickly. Okay, how do we erase this? Erase means the erase. Okay, so there. So uh, first we have to include the uh, p thread the header file, and this is the encapsulation of an argument. So we define a uh, structure underscore my arg t, and then we pass uh, inside this structure, we have two fields, we have A and B. And then this is the thread function or the start routine right, in the previous uh, example. So uh, inside this uh, start routine or thread function, so notice that it's void star here. So it's, uh, it returns a pointer to void, and then the argument is also void star. Right now, so this is how we de de define that you, by default you define the thread function, and then if you want to access the argument passed to the thread function, so this is the name. This is the name. You have to type cast it. Okay, so to this uh, uh, pointer. So this is a pointer. So you you have to type cast it my arg underscore p star, and then you have a local variable here on the thread. Remember that uh, a thread has its own stack. So this means that this uh, star M here, or this M is actually inside the stack of this of the thread that will be created that will execute this code. And then uh, once, you have, once you have a reference inside the thread for the past argument, you can now display uh, the values. That's the idea. And as for the main function, this is what how it will look like. So you need to have a thread handle here, p thread underscore tp, and then you define a local variable on the stack of main. So this will be on the stack of main. So uh, at this point in Tomsai 125, you should always remember now that uh, the main uh, the main function is the main thread. I so always think of it as a main thread, as a thread. Think of the main function as a thread. So here we create a, how we define a local variable p, which is a p thread underscore t. And then we also uh, created a structure, okay, uh, args here. And then we, a variable uh, args of type my arg underscore p. And then we set the fields to 10 and 20, a and b. And then, we have the return uh, code here, and then we invoke or we call pthread create to supply the uh, uh, address of this variable. And then for the attribute, we simply set null, and then we sp specify the name of the thread function. And then notice that we need to use ampersand here. Okay? It is ampersand because this is a structure so we need to pass the address of these args to this uh, to this uh, to this function, okay? So there. Now let's look at. So that's how uh, the thread is created and how we pass uh, parameters to the thread or pass information inside the thread, right? So the next one is uh, waiting for a thread to complete. 
right? Now, waiting for a thread to complete is the same, almost the same mechanism as the wait system called in, in terms of processes, right? So remember, we have the four exec and wait system call. So the wait system call will, uh, will let the parent uh, wait for the child to finish first before uh, exiting. Right? So this is uh, similar to that. So uh, the, the pthread join is that function and you need to supply the parameter p uh, the, the, the thread. And then the uh, this one here, uh, the value PTR is a pointer to the return value, right? So this avoid star star, right? A pointer to the return value, right? a pointer to a pointer, right? Because p thread join routine changes to value, you need to pass in a pointer to that value, right? So that's the idea. p thread join changes to value, so you need to pass a pointer to that. So uh, let's, do we have an example here? Okay, so uh, let's have an example of uh, uh, thread completion. Okay? So this is almost similar to the example earlier, but in addition to the argument that is passed to the thread function, we also have a return, uh, uh, we define a, a, a structure for the uh, for the data to be returned uh, from the thread, okay? and this is now our how our thread function will look like. So the definition is uh, the same, the function prototype, right? Function definition, and the same process of obtaining the past argument, and then we display it, right? And what we want to do here is to return something from the thread. So in this code, you will notice that uh, we have a, a local variable. Again, R here it will be stored on the stack of the thread that will run this code. And then uh, we have the myrep underscore P here. And then we allocate this on the heap. So remember that uh, threads will uh, share the same, the address space of the process, right? Where it is, it was created or where it is running. So here, uh, we have an allocation on the heap, and that allocation will be uh, aside. The reference to that memory will be uh, placed to in R. So actually, this there is something wrong or something missing here. So supposedly there should be a uh, it should be type casted, right? Similar to this one. So it should be uh, my uh, parentheses my red underscore t star closing parentheses because we need to type plus this and then we assign once it's allocated the return value we set the value to one and two for the x and y and then we return that uh uh that reference okay so void star r okay so this one here so we return a pointer basically return a pointer and this one, this R is actually pointing on the data on the heap, right? So that's uh, that's what happened. What's happening? Okay, so that is for the thread function. Now for the main function. Uh, because we are interested in uh, getting the return value, so this is how it will look like. Okay, so the usual, we have the, let's clear this. Okay, so the thread function will, uh, the main function, the main thread will look like this. So the usual, we have the uh, type, the, the p thread underscore tp, and then we have uh, the return value, which is a pointer, m. Uh, so this is the return value. It, it, will, it will point to the uh, data where the thread will return its value. Right? It will be a reference. So 
uh, the usual uh, arms A, that A equals 10, arms that B equals 20. Then we create a thread and then we join the, we call P thread join and then we pass in the, notice the, the difference between uh, P thread create. So this one, you pass the address. Uh, you pass the address for P thread create and uh, you simply pass the P for the P thread join. And then you pass the address of the pointer. So notice this is a pointer already, but you need to pass the address of that. So that's why it's a pointer to a pointer, a star star, right? So when the thread returns, the value will be uh, stored on M and we, uh, the, at, the, at the main thread, in the main thread, we can access the value set to M by by the thread, okay? So that's uh, how uh, it works. So let's move on to the next one. So what are some uh, ways that might uh, cause the failure of uh, returning from values from a thread. So this one is an example of uh, a wrong way to return values from, uh, from a thread, right? So you will notice here that uh, my red underscore PR is allocated on the stack. Compared to the my thread function here, where in the my red PR is allocated on the heap Right, so see this. We are calling malloc, but this one we simply uh, we simply created a local variable which is actually allocated on the stack of the thread. So when the thread exits, then whatever is uh, in the stack of the thread exits exited, then the data will actually be lost. Right, so please be careful with that. So follow this pattern; it's quite easy. If you want to return something from the thread from within the thread, allocate the data on the stack, uh, on the heap, and then return a pointer to that, return the pointer to that allocated data on the heap, and then uh, let join receive that data using this syntax. So please follow that pattern to avoid uh, wrong results in your program. So we can also have simpler arguments to a thread, like in the case of just a plain integer. So for example, we have here the thread function. So the, the same definition, void star my thread, void star arg, but we can uh, simply typecast that in arg and int m. So you have just using an integer value, and then you print that, and then you simply add one to the whatever is uh, in arg, okay? So arg plus one, okay? And then on the main thread, uh, let's say you pass in 100 and then uh, p thread join p void star star address of m, which is an integer. And then you simply, you, you should get 101 okay, for, for this value. All right, so let's take a look at some code first before we proceed to the next, uh, to the other functions. Uh, so these are from the code of source code of OS, OS step. So we're in the threads API topic. Uh, say VI thread create. So this is the code for that. So uh, notice that, uh, yeah. So there is an assertion here. This assertion is actually used to check whether the the thread creation is successful, right? And then uh, we join the thread. So let's take a look at how, how let's see how this code works. Okay, this is means O uh, uh, thread that L and then uh, thread create that C minus LP thread or, or just dash p thread. So we get the 
So 1020 done. So that is essentially the output of trend create the C. So you have the structure here, 1020, and then we created the thread. This thread get executed. What it did is to simply print the values A and B, and we get the result. Now let's take a look at the uh, example with thread uh, create with the return uh, args, right? So this is the code shown in, in the slide. So we have the thread, uh, we have the structure for the argument, we have the structure for what is to be returned, and then we have the thread function. So here is how we obtain the, we get a local copy, that is how we get a local copy of the argument, and we can print the argument, and then we allocate memory on the heap, okay? And we have our vals for the pointer to that. And then uh, we make sure that the allocation was successful. And then we set the value to one and two, and then we return our vals, which is a pointer, right? It is our vals here. And then in the main thread, now uh, in the main thread, right? So main thread, so we have this local variable 1020. And then uh, notice that we have P thread, capital P here, right? Instead of the small p, right? So the idea here is to use what we call a wrapper, right? Because we want to check, uh, to automatically check uh, uh, for error errors. So what the one they did in our step, that this example code is to use wrapper. So notice that it's capital letter. So let's see if we can compile this using the usual approach. So we can just scroll up. And then three could create with uh, arms. So we, let's just, just use mate, right? So we'll get uh, this code here, right? So, uh, So we have, uh, if you look at the make file, you'll see that you have an include uh, here. So so this is, this is where the uh, P thread create was uh, wrapped. Right? So you see the hash defined here, P thread create, and then, uh, what it simply did is to put in assert that the thread creation is successful equal to zero, right? So that's why the, we need to use the make uh, the function or the make program to build the executable. And then once we have this, we can uh, run just the executable thread create with return arms. And this is the output of the code that I, I showed you a while ago. So. 10, 20, and it returned one, two, right? So what else? So the other one, the last one, and the last example to show is the thread create with simple argument. So uh, let's take a look at the code. The source code. And this is what we're going to get. So it's simpler because we don't need uh, to define structures for the for the arguments and the return value. So we simply put in, say, long, long int here as the argument. And what we did is to uh, add one to the value. And then We use join to retrieve that value and then we print that value. So supposedly we're expecting 101. So let's see uh, if, we, if the program does that correctly. And there you have it, 100 and return 
101. All right? So that is for the basic uh, thread creation, thread joining, waiting for a thread, and then uh, passing arguments and returning values from thread. So now, now let's uh, move on to LUX. So in the previous video, we talked about LUX as a way to be able to achieve mutual exclusion. So uh, here are the functions that, although we will discuss this in the succeeding chapter, these are the functions useful for LUX manipulation. So LUX are used for mutual exclusion so that uh, only one thread will be able to enter its critical section especially if you have shared data. So the interface will look like this. So uh, p thread underscore mutex lock, then a p thread underscore mutex underscore p, and then star mutex, and then uh, p thread mutex unlock, p thread mutex underscore t star mutex. So uh, lock and unlock usually is used in conjunction with each other. Uh, this is how it is. Uh, uh, how it is typically used. So you define a you define a, a variable, a mutex lock here, right? and then you call mutex lock to obtain the lock, and then this is the critical section. Do, do the code here, and then you unlock that. After that, you call unlock to release the, uh, the lock. So no other thread holds the lock. The th if no other thread still holds the lock, the thread will acquire the lock and enter the critical section. If another thread holds the lock, the thread will not return from call until it has acquired the lock. So essentially the, the, the thread that does not have the lock will wait for the lock to be released. Okay, so all locks must be properly initialized in this manner. So p thread mutex underscore t lock equals p thread mutex initializer. Dynamic way, uh, you can use p thread mutex in it, right? So to initialize a lock, but usually the first uh, the first syntax uh, is okay. Uh, and we can also have wrappers. So actually, there are wrappers also in the example. So the common, uh, just look in the, if you look at the example code, just go under the include folder and common underscore threads that H going to see the, the wrappers. Okay. And there are also other calls for uh, lock acquisition. We have the try lock. Try lock will return a failure if the lock is already held. So. Uh, it's just it, it's a form of testing whether the lock is already being held by another thread. So it's try lock. And also we have time lock, return after a timeout or after acquiring the lock. So you can specify a specific time uh, the, the time out before uh, this code. So you can specify a time uh, for this uh, for this function to return. And depending on if the timeout has expired or it has acquired the lock before it will return. So where so do we have let's see if we have an example uh, for this? Uh, so in this uh, in this folder threads API, there's no code uh, for the maybe we can thread the box the example. So it didn't have an example here, but uh, in the in the succeeding chapters, we're going to see some examples on how to use these stuff. And then uh, for condition variables, uh, so condition variables are useful for uh, synchronization, as mentioned in the previous video. So we have condition variables and. Uh, for condition variables, it's a form of signaling, uh, basically for thread synchronization. And there are two important functions for condition variables. We have p thread underscore con underscore weight and p thread underscore con underscore signal. So uh, weight and signal, right? So the weight function will put the calling thread to sleep 
and wait for uh, some other thread to signal it, right? So you have here the condition variable, and it also has a mutex or a lock uh, parameter. And the signal one, the signal function will unblock at least one of the threads that are blocked on the condition variable. So if let's say if you want uh, before a, a thread can continue, it has to wait for a previous th thread to finish first. So these are the two functions that we're going to use for that. Here's an example of uh, a thread with the uh, condition variables. So first we have uh, first we have we created the lock and we initialize it using the initializer. Then we also created the uh, condition variable p thread underscore con underscore t and initialized it. And then we call the lock on this lock. Okay, we call mutex lock this lock variable, and then while initialized, so this is the conditions that the condition that we are waiting on. Okay, so while initialized equals equals zero, okay, we uh, wait. Okay, we wait. Okay, and we pass in the condition variable in it and the lock. Okay, and then uh, once initialized is uh, set to one, for example, then the function will return and uh, the lock can be unlocked. Okay? So the wait call, uh, the wait call here releases the lock when putting said caller to uh, to sleep. Okay? So it will put the the one the, the thread that calls this to sleep. And before returning, uh, after being woken, the wait will require will reacquire the the lock. Okay? So. That's why you need to pass in the lock, uh, the lock variable here because uh, when the caller, when this goes to sleep because of the weight, right, uh, it will release this lock so that other, other threads can get hold of this. But once it's uh, awakened or awake, right, it, will, uh, uh, it will reacquire. It will reacquire this lock so that it can be unlocked in the next line of code. Okay, and on the other side, the thread calling the signal routine will look something like this. So this is the part, that's why it, it's passed here. Okay, so the other thread will lock the lock and then uh, it will, let's say it initialize one and then it can now uh, signal the, it can now signal the, the condition variable, okay? and then unlock the lock. So that is the typical uh, process of using the condition, uh, uh, this condition variables. Okay, so the waiting uh, thread rechecks the condition in a while loop. Right? So you may notice that uh, this one is not using if. Right? Why, why use the while loop? Right? So without rechecking, uh, the waiting thread will continue thinking that the condition has changed. Right? So if you simply use a while uh, if here, right? uh, the waiting thread will continue thinking that the condition has changed, right? even though it has not actually. Right, because you simply use if. So it should always be uh, while right, when you're using, uh, when you're checking for the condition. So here is another uh, way to misuse the condition variable. Right? So here, this is the typical approach of, uh, of newbies right, when uh, let's say they are trying to implement some form of synchronization. So you have while initialized equals zero, and then you simply have an empty statement here. It's called spinning, okay? And then the signal routine would be simply initialized to one. So uh, the problem with this is that the spinning will actually waste CPU cycle. Unlike here, uh, we're in the thread, using, using condition variables will put the thread to sleep, right? It, it will not be in the, in the ready, uh, in the running state, so it will not be actually scheduled. So, 
in a way, it saves some CPU time. But here, if you have uh, this approach, this technique, what happens is that uh, the thread is, is still, uh, the state of the thread is, is still running, so it's still scheduled. But every time it is scheduled, it will simply do something like this. So it, so it will spin. So it uh, is basically, uh, it weighs CPU cycles. Right? And it also not guaranteed that the signaling will, signaling weight and signaling will, will happen. So to compile these examples, uh, you can uh, you use, you need to supply the dash or minus p thread uh, option or command line argument, right? Uh, in order to link your code with thread. So you can look at for information man uh, minus k p threads. You can look at the list of functions that are available for p threads. Okay, so I guess that uh, that this ends the this chapter, uh, which is more on the different functions that we will actually see later. Uh, uh, for the thread API. That will be all. See you on the next uh, video.